Well, everybody, how y'all doing today? And welcome back to D-Race Shop. Well, the other day I was driving my 2007 Chevrolet 2500 HD Silverado Classic, and I had pulled my camper down to the lake. And on the way back, as I pulled into the driveway, I started hearing a, a what sounded to be like a lifter noise, but it didn't really sound like conventional lifter noise that I had heard on small block Chevrolets from years ago. You know, of course, these engines all have roller lifters on them. And it was making a noise timing wise, it was consistent with a lifter, but it was more of a metal to metal scraping noise than just a, a tick. So, of course, as usual, I got on the internet and started doing a little surfing around and doing a little research and ran across forum after forum about uh, cam and lifter problems associated with this family of V8 engines for Chevrolet and GM in general. So uh, today's video is not necessarily going to be a tutorial on exactly how to address this problem, but I just really wanted to kind of show you what I found when I went into my engine and kind of give you an idea of uh, if you run into this problem with your vehicle, what you're kind of looking forward to getting into to repair it. So let's get started. Now in order to remove the camshaft on this truck, there's a lot of things you got to get out of the way first. Mainly the radiator, the AC condenser, and a few of the other accessories on the front of the engine. So what I did is I just basically dismantled the whole front end of the truck. Took the headlight units out, the upper radiator bracket, and everything. So that did give me a little more climbing room to get over in the engine bay so I could disassemble things. As you can see here, I've got the engine disassembled. In order to get the camshaft out, you have to remove the cylinder heads to get the lifters out. So I got the cylinder heads off, removed the front timing cover, removed all the accessories off the front of the engine, and that way it would allow me to extract the camshaft out of the front of the engine. So we got all that radiator and stuff out of the way. And what I was really surprised to find was this truck has a little over 114,000 miles on it. But if you take a look at the cylinder walls, they still have the cross hatch in them, which means they have very little wear in them. So I didn't really think it was necessary for me to go ahead and pull this engine and tear it all the way down. Since everything else looks pretty good, the engine's real clean on the inside. I, I've tried to take good care of it over the years and change my oil regular and everything like that. So basically, uh, you know, we're just going to put a cam lifter set in it, uh, new upper end gaskets and things, uh, time and chain set, force first one thing or another, and put it all back together. Yeah, all kinds of parts laying around here. Yeah, oops, got a little oil spill there. I have to clean that up. But yeah, there's the upper radiator bracket, part of the headlight units there. Uh, air conditioner condenser and of course exhaust manifold other things now what I did too is the rocker arms and the push rods I took me a couple of boxes and I marked them for the left and the right head and all of these parts I've taken them off in the order that they're gonna go back that way I can get all of that the rocker arms and push rods back into the original spot that they belonged in now, of course, the uh, the lifters and the lifter guides and things like that, I will not be reusing those. We're going to put a new cam and new lifters in it. As well as head bolts, can't reuse those. So i got new head bolts coming, gasket sets and things like that. Lots of stuff. Now, here's the, the whole root of the problem to begin with. This is the uh, intake lobe number five cylinder. And if you take a look real carefully there, see if this thing will zoom in, there it is. You can see that lifter roller is pitted up. And as a matter of fact, uh, I guess some of the material that came off of the roller as it was pitting actually got into the needle bearings of the roller and stuck it because you can see that there's actually a flat spot on that lifter. And I, I'm supposing that's probably why it was making that scraping noise when it uh, started ticking. The, the lifter is pretty free right now. The roller still turns, but uh, I'm, I'm assuming it probably some of that grit got in there and, and locked it up. Of course, you can see it's trashed that lifter there, so it's definitely, it's history. But it also kind of galled up that lobe, that intake lobe on the number five cylinder there. So that cam's trashed. So uh, the problem I ran into was trying to locate a OEM camshaft for it, because right now they're on back order and they had no estimated delivery date. And I got to looking at aftermarket camshafts and most of them were for high performance applications, the first one thing and another. So I ran across a company out of uh, South Louisiana called Cam Motion, and they custom grind CNC grind camshafts. So I called them up, talked to them for a little bit, told them what my what my situation was. You know, I just is just a daily driver. It's my old shop truck. You know, nothing performance wise. You know, he says, well, man, I can I can grind you a, 
a cam back to the original specs if you want. He says, or I can customize it a little bit and give it to, I told him that I'd been pulling campers and boats and things like that, you know, and I'd like to have a little bit more low end performance. He said, sure, no problem. So he custom ground a camshaft for me. Now this one, you can't really tell it by looking at it, but if you look at the specs on it, the, um, the duration and the lift is about, it's just a little bit more than stock. I think the lift is actually only about 30 thousandths more than stock. So it's not really gonna be a real radical cam, but hopefully it'll give it just a little more oomph on the bottom end. And without making it just have really more horrible gas mileage than it already does. And of course, while I got the heads off, I went ahead and pulled a couple of the valves out just to kind of check the, the guides and things. And uh, so I went ahead and got uh, in the gasket set, came with new valve guide seals. So we're gonna replace all that. I've decarbonized and cleaned the cylinder heads up. Of course, those are aluminum. Uh, also cleaned up all the valve train. And the only other thing I did, the intake valves were really good, but the exhaust valves had a little bit of pitting on the face. So I took them to the local machine shop, had them face those exhaust valves. So I'm gonna reassemble those with new seals, put all that stuff back together, and then we'll be ready to go. So, if uh, you run into a problem with your uh, with your GM V8, now this particular one is the six liter. It's uh, the LY6 engine. Uh, uh, I guess it's a 364 cubic inch. But uh, now as far as the lifter problem, that can happen on five, three, six liter, uh, a lot of the LS family of engines. But uh, if you run into a valve ticking noise or scraping noise, then most likely this is what's gonna be your problem right here. And that's, that's it's really a shame. That's a heck of a lot of work to have to go through to replace that. Oh well, yeah. Gotta love it. All right guys, well I gotta get back to getting these cylinder heads back together. Now what I'll do is uh, once I get the truck all reassembled and back in service, drive it for a little while, I'll do a follow up video to kind of give you my thoughts on how this different cam performs as far as pulling my camper and just day to day driving. And I'll also kind of do a follow-up as far as some of the major difficulties that I ran into doing this operation. Uh, so far, I've not really run into any real bad stumbling blocks. Uh, one of the things that I did encounter that I have read a lot about on the internet is exhaust manifold bolts. I actually broke one off in the cylinder head when I was disassembling the engine. And on the driver's side, I actually found that two of the bolts were broke off from who knows how long ago. I wasn't having any exhaust leaks, but uh, it is kind of a pain in the butt to get those drilled out of there without ruining those aluminum cylinder heads. But it can be done, you just gotta take your time and be careful with it. So that all turned out pretty good. But, but as I said, I will do a follow up video, let you know how everything turned out. And then we'll go from there. All right. Well, guys, as always, appreciate y'all watching. Y'all have a good one. See y'all next time around.